Yo, 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 what's poppin'? I'm Jacques Slade, and these are the Air Jordan Retros dropping for the month of July. Lots of kicks ready-made for the summer, man. I like it. All right, let's start things off with a different take on a familiar Jordan 1. Air Jordan 1 KO filled purple, July 1st, 450 bucks. The Air Jordan 1 KO starts things off this month with a filled purple colorway that looks a little different from previous KO releases. That's because this pair is getting the satin treatment, which feels like the polar opposite of a sneaker with a canvas upper. Instead of a typical Jordan KO that feels dulled out on purple, this one is going to have a sheen to it that's going to be polarizing, I feel. Jordan Airship Tech Gray, the US releases July 1st for 140. Recently, Jordan brand and Nike rebranded the Nike Airship as the Jordan Airship. As the first shoe that Michael Jordan wore in the NBA, it's an interesting move that really drives the point home that yes, the airships are now part of the Jordan family. Conspiracy Jacques likes to think that it's a small failure on Nike's part that they couldn't educate the public well enough to drive sales, but it could just be a simple accounting move that ultimately makes sense in the long run. Anyways, here's a tech gray colorway on the way. Nikes are Jordans. I think the airships need a long runway and more releases before people appreciate their historic value. Air Jordan 1 KO Low Panda, July 1st for 120. <laughs> I mean, I can already feel the heat coming from people who are sick and tired of the internet calling every sneaker that's black and white Panda. Look, I personally don't have a problem with Panda sneakers or Pandas in general. I mean, if you have problems with Pandas, you should maybe rethink a lot of things, but the popular color scheme that's been found on Dunks and Jordan 1s is getting a more familiar KO look with the canvas upper. The lower cut makes them perfect for the warmer months, but you're gonna want to invest in a cleaner or two because KOs are dirt traps, especially those that have bright or white uppers. Air Jordan 1 KO Low Bread, July 1st for 120. Now, if you're not feeling the Panda KOs, maybe they could interest you in some breads instead releasing the two popular color schemes on the same day is an interesting choice but it's always possible one of these gets pushed back to create some separation anyways black and red ones are always a welcome sight to the sneakerhead eyes and i think this pair has a chance to break through and be a big hit i could see these being more popular than the pandas honestly Women's Air Jordan 2 Low, Varsity Royal, July 6 for 150 bucks. Following in the footsteps of the simultaneous Jordan 1 Low releases, we've got a pair of Jordan 2s dropping in close proximity to each other. First up, we've got the women's only Varsity Royal colorway that evokes the classic Chicago colorway with some minor tweaks, such as the use of a sail color outsole to give it a vintage look. It's a curious choice, but it looks like a decision that was made in order to make them stand out from the Chicago, but also to cater to the still popular trend of pre-vintage new sneaker releases, if you know what I mean. Air Jordan 2 Low, UNC, July 8th for 150 bucks. Michael Jordan wore these during his younger days. That fact alone should make this one of the most popular and eagerly anticipated retros of 2023. Initially believed to be a kids only release, several outlets are reporting that these will also come in adult sizes. So yeah, kind of a big deal, people. Worn by Michael Jordan during the 1987 North Carolina alumni game against UCLA alumni, man, how come we don't see those sort of exhibition games by today's players? This was a hidden gem that could have been lost to time if not for the blog era that poured through every old grainy video and every entry on Getty Images for something to talk about. Personally, I think Jordan Brand should have leaned into the MJ wore these factoid a little more because the number of J's that Michael has worn that has never received a retro release is dwindling with every dip into that archive. Maybe give it special packaging or a nod to the day he played in them on the insoles. Nothing too fancy that detracts from the shoe though. Before we move on to the rest of the retros, here are a look at some new releases and kids only drops from Jordan brand this month. Kids Air Jordan 1 Mid SE Volt that's gonna be on the first for 120. Jordan Luca 2 Quai 54 Global Release is on the eighth for 130. Jordan Luca 2 Luca.ai, it's a Lu Kai or Luca AI, that's on the 11th for 130. Jordan Tatum 1 Old School that's on the 15th for 120. The Kids Air Jordan 6 Low Fierce Pink that's on the 24th for 140. And then the Jordan Luca 2 Nebula on the 27th for 130. 30. All right, back to the hot releases. Women's Air Jordan 12 Brilliant Orange on the 13th for $200. With the WNBA All-Star Game going down on July 15th, Jordan Brand is dropping a women's exclusive colorway of the Air Jordan 12 in the W's signature orange on the mudguard, pull tab, and outsole paired with a black leather upper. In my opinion, the Air Jordan 12 doesn't need to go crazy with the patterns and the gimmicks. It just needs to do one job and do it well. Give us the flu game color blocking with every color imaginable and we'll be happy. So far, we've gotten red, white, blue, yellow, and now orange. I won't be able to fit into this pair since they are a women's only release, but I'm not complaining. Well, I can complain about the pricing of all Jordan retros nowadays. $200? Wow. But 
I mean, other than that, just keep it simple with the 12s, guys. Air Jordan 7, Chambray, July 15th for $200. Returning for the first time since 2006 is the Chambray colorway of the Air Jordan 7, released during a, let's say, very experimental era for Jordan brand when it came to the 7s. The Chambray dropped in 06, dropped alongside the Flint, which also got a 2021 retro, and the Citrus, a pair you can still find sometimes in store that re-released in 2022. Now that is 2023, the Chambray is next up with the all-black Nubuck upper with silver and Chambray blue to give the shoe some contrast along the midsole and heel. It's a pair that easily could have been an OG colorway in my opinion, but for those who got their first taste of the sevens in the 2000s, this is their chance to re-up after almost 20 years. And now we wait for the Pacific Blue and Black and Maze Retros in 2024 and 25 if this release pattern holds. Air Jordan 6 Craft Celestial Gold, July 15th for $200. As of this recording, there are no official images of this release. So all we've got is this mock-up that could be horribly wrong. The new Celestial Gold colorway of the Air Jordan 6 doesn't look that much different from the Air Jordan 6 Golden Moments that dropped in 2012 and an Air Jordan 6 Low Chinese New Year in a similar colorway that you can get right now at Nike.com. But upon closer inspection, you'll see why it was given the Kraft moniker. It's got a white suede upper, a noticeable change from over white based Air Jordan 6s and really that's the big draw of this particular pair. It's a white suede. It's not as much of a dirt trap as the Air Jordan 1 KO, but it's definitely going to be something you're gonna to wanna to have a cleaner handy if you're going to be wearing them regularly. Air Jordan 1 High OG University Blue Toe on the 22nd for 180. A descendant of the legendary first shattered backboard Air Jordan 1, this University Blue version uses the same color blocking but with one very glaring and for some people disqualifying difference. Unlike the shattered backboard or the bread toe or the court purple, this pair opts for a regular white leather side panel and midsole instead of the sail color that gave it a somewhat vintage detail. Maybe there's a sample floating out there where Jordan Brand did try to give this pair that off-white look and it just didn't have the same sort of pop. My guess is that if they had released the cell version, there would be some confusion between this release and 2019's Obsidian Jordan 1 that shares a similar North Carolina vibe. Either way, this will be a pair that's on plenty of people's feet this summer. Women's Air Jordan 1 Low OG, UNC to Chicago, July 26 for 140. A handful of outlets reported that this was going to drop on June 26. I guess they really meant July 26. Oops. Regardless, MJ's journey from North Carolina to Chicago is being told once again through an Air Jordan 1 in women's only sizing. But this time, it's going to be on a Jordan 1 low. The elements are the same. The dark powder blue covers the swoosh and the heel, while the gym red can be found on the toe box, outsole, and the Nike Air logo. Air Jordan 1 Low OG Black Toe on the 28th for 140. A pair that is heavily rumored to release but still doesn't have any official imagery out there as of this recording is the Black Toe version of the Air Jordan 1 Low. We've seen other iconic colorways of the Air Jordan 1 make their way to a low, so it was only a matter of time until we got a Black Toe in the mix as well. We've got Varsity Red on the heel counter, heel tab, Nike Air Tag, and outsole that's complemented by a white leather base and black overlays. If you missed out on the, wow. It's been seven years since a proper black toe retro and a few years since it came out in satin. Huh, that's been a minute. Anyway, there are reports of a reimagined Air Jordan 1 black toe coming later this year or in 2024, but if you can't wait, I would advise going with this pair to tide you over. All right. That's going to do it for the Jordans dropping this month. As always, expect a few dates to be moved around as soon as we post this video, or even better, just days before a pair is supposed to release. Such is life when it comes to sneaker drops, especially Jordan retros. I'm Jock Slade, and I'll see you next week. Peace.